Welcome to the Sudarshan Chemical Industries Q2 F22 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchstone telephone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sanjay Jain from ICICI Securities. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Jain. Thanks, Arushal. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining uh, with us on Sudarshan Chemical Industries Limited Q2 FY22 results conference call. We have Sudarshan Chemicals Management with us, uh, Mr. Rajesh Rati, Managing Director, Mr. Neelkan Natu, our Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Vivek Thakur, General, fi General Manager Finance, Mr. Amay Atale, Deputy General Manager Finance, and Mr. Mandar Velankar, Company Secretary. I would like to invite Mr. Rajesh Rati to initiate the proceeding with his opening remarks, post which we will have Q&A session. Uh, over to you, Rajesh Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so, so much, SJG, uh, for hosting this call. Uh, uh, we are privileged to be associated with you. Uh, I think the Q2 quarter was uh, one of uh, uh, one of uh, a very tough quarter for us, both in terms of uh, uh, demand shopping, uh, which we saw post uh, the wave two in India, and uh, uh, globally having a lot, lot of logistics issue, a lot of volatility, uh, which also caused a lot of uh, uh, margin pressures. Um, however, the good news is that uh, we are recovering well uh, out of Q2. And uh, for a more detailed uh, discussion, I'm going to request uh, our CFO, Mr. Uh, Natu, to kind of give us a uh, uh, overview, Natu, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rati, for opening remarks. Uh, thank you, Sanjay, for hosting our conference call. Uh, earning call. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Sudarshan Quarter 2 FY22 Earnings Conference Call. Our investor presentation has been uploaded on the stock exchanges for your ready reference. I would like to take you through the financial highlights for this quarter. Uh, there is a lot of background noise. Sanjay, hi, here. There is a lot of background noise. Yeah, yeah thank you. I would like to take you through the financial highlights for this quarter. On a consolidated basis, total income from operations stood at rupees 498 crore as compared to rupees 429 crore for the same period last year, reporting a growth of 16% year on year. EBITDA for the quarter stood at 53 crore as compared to rupees 68 crore in Q2 FY21. EBITDA margin stood at 10.6% as compared to 15.8% over the same period last year. Profit after tax stood at Rs. 23 crore as compared to Rs. 30 crore for the same period last year. On half yearly basis, total income from operations stood at 972 crore versus Rs. 781 crore in the same period last year, a growth of 24%. EBITDA for H1 at rupees 115 crore versus rupees 121 crore for last year. EBITDA margin stood at 11.8% versus 15.4% over the same period last year. That is at similar level of 49 crore in both the periods. Now going into the details of our pigment. For the quarter income from operations stood at rupees 448 crore, a growth of 12% year on year. EBITDA for the quarter stood at Rs. 50 crore as compared to Rs. 56 crore in Q2 FY21. EBITDA margin stood at 11.2% uh, as compared to 16.3% over the same period last year. Demand in the domestic market had been stopped until July due to COVID wave 2 disruption. Demand started picking up gradually from August onwards. Due to steep polymer prices increases, the plastic industry demand was affected. Coating segment continued to grow, however, sales in the in segment were strong. Domestic sales stood at Rs. 239 crore as compared to Rs. 200 crore, growth of 18%.
export for the quarter were at rupees 209 crore as compared to rupees 200 crore last year growth of 5 percent year on year subdued demand and availability of container in q2 were the main challenge we also experienced aggressive pricing approach for by some competitors for short term gains we are now seeing cost increases are getting passed on by the competition specialty sales stood at rupees 302 crore as compared to rupees 271 crore for the previous year same quarter up 11 percent year on year non specialty sales for the quarter stood at rupees 146 crore as compared to rupees 131 crore for the same period last year up by 11 percent year on year Gross margin for the quarter stood at 43.5 percent compared to 44 percent for the same period last year. All basic chemical and intermediate prices have been going up since April. In addition to this, the China energy policy has escalated the prices to the unprecedented level. Our endeavor is to pass majority of the cost increases to the customer. However, continuous and sharp input cost increase inevitably creates a large effect in passing it on to the customer. Apart from raw material cost increases, we also saw energy and logistics costs uh, are also rising continuously. Coal price is now increased to 250% of Q4 FY21 level. This is pushing up the manufacturing cost. To counter this external cost pressure, our plant team is focusing on process improvements and reducing our manufacturing cost. We are seeing significant improvements getting implemented, which will help us optimize cost further. The challenges in the logistic areas are continuing and leading to freight cost escalation of three to four times. With direct as well as indirect material cost pressure lingering, we will have to continue with selling price increases taking calibrated approach to balance on volume growth. Government has notified a road test scheme raised in August. Pigment qualify for 0.8% benefit under this scheme as against 2% MEI benefit available until last year. We have accrued Rs. 2.5 crore towards this in this quarter. However, rate as well as coverage of export both are lower under road tape. All these factors together have led to EBITDA margin uh, declining to 11.2% for the quarter. Now coming to the CapEx project, which is our thrust for future growth. <clears throat> our yellow pigment products are now stabilized and we have started commercial sales. We expect to ramp up sales from Q3 onwards with more customer approvals coming in. Another new product under high performance pigment is in plant trials and is on track for commercialization for by end of Q3. We expect to launch products during Q4 FY22. Our CapEx project to launch products in the inorganic high performance segment is also in the planned trial phase and we expect commercialization during Q4 FY22. Capacity expansion towards existing pigment range has reached product stabilization phase for new lines. Looking at this project update, we are glad to share with you all that a significant progress is made on our CapEx installation and major CapEx projects are on track for commercialization in H2. Our total CapEx plan of Rs. 750 crore is on track. Total capitalization is at Rs. 293 crore and balance we expect to capitalize by end of this fiscal year. Happy to share with you that Sudarshan has won Atma Award 2021 in CSR Excellence in August 21. Mahatma Award recognizes and celebrates impact leaders and change makers across the globe who are making a social impact and leading the way to a sustainable future. As a part of Employee Welfare Initiative, Sudarshan has initiated vaccination drive and majority of our employees at all locations have now been fully vaccinated. We also extended vaccination drive to nearby community in the Roha and Mahad region as a part of CSR initiative. Our manufacturing plants continued to operate in line with various directives of the government during the last quarter, and we continue to deploy and practice necessary safety precautions regularly to ensure continuity and uninterrupted functioning of our plants. With safety and welfare of our employees being of utmost importance. 
we look forward to continuing our growth journey and delivering value to our to all our stakeholders with this now we open the floor for question and answer session thank you thank you very much ladies and gentlemen we will now begin the question and answer session to ask a question please enter star then 1 on your touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star then 2 Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. We will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Rohit Nagraj from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so the first question is in terms of the impact because of the floods in Mahat. So how much was the impact during this quarter and uh whether we will be able to recover part of it in uh, subsequent quarters thank you uh, we had lost almost uh, uh, 15 days of uh, production uh, and however thereafter also there have been several uh, <clears throat> issues month on month where uh, about uh, you know about 15 to 20 percent uh, production because of uh, uh, some breakdowns uh, in the CTP pipeline, etc., which was which has been happening. Either there has been a in water, you know, so there was been some effect uh, due to that. Uh, uh, but however, we do feel uh, there are a lot of actions which the government and uh, they are taking to correct that. And uh, going forward, we should not see uh, such a such a large uh, issue. Uh, can you quantify how much uh, we lost and whether part of it is recoverable during uh, the current quarter or subsequent quarters, or is it uh, lost for uh, the time being? Yeah, that would be lost, sir. Uh, I mean, uh, in terms of 15 per, uh, fifteen percent production and around about 15, uh, 15 days of production earlier, and then almost 15 percent uh, each month, that was the kind of uh, loss every month thereafter. Uh, it's not recoverable because uh, uh, you know those lines do run full uh, in coming uh, quarters, but we will see a good gain once we standardize on that. So, so now it is stabilized. We don't have any issues, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, so the second question uh, is uh, in terms of the specialty uh, chemicals revenue. So now we see that about uh, one third is uh, non-specialty and two third is specialty. Uh, after the entire capex of uh, 750 crores is over, uh, do we see a shift in terms of the uh, revenue profile uh, more skewed towards specialty or how is it? Thank you. Yes, sir. It, it will be skewed towards specialty. Uh, more skewed towards speciality. Uh, right. And uh, just one small clarification. Uh, we have mentioned in our uh, uh, presentation that uh, industry consolidation trend uh, continued. So uh, this is, we are talking about the domestic or global and what have been the new uh, you know, consolidation trends that we have seen. Thank you. Uh, so the consolidation is uh, twofold. One is uh, uh, clarion uh, 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 you know, Clarion's, uh, uh, you know, Hoiberg and SK Capital taking over Clarion, and the second is uh, the uh, D DIC Group taking over VSF. Uh, right. Uh, uh, right. So, uh, thank you so much, and best of luck, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Our next question is from the line of Ankur Periwal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, uh, in your opening remarks, you did mention, uh, uh, you know, certain pressure due to aggressive pricing by some of the competition. Uh, juxtaposing this with the with the global consolidation that we are seeing, uh, is this uh, competition more local or it is more international, wherein we are seeing some aggressive pricing? Uh, sir, it's more global. Uh, it's more global and uh, uh, it, was, it is short-term driven. Uh, uh, short-term driven. Uh, however, given the uh, increase in the, uh, the amount of cost and uh, inflation, I don't think it's kind of, uh, you know, we are already able to see a lot of pass-on uh, happening. And uh, uh, because of this, some of the price acceptance in the market was very difficult, the cost escalation, because uh, 
few players were not completely uh, uh, willing to pass on the increase. Okay, uh, so if I got you right, starting this quarter, we are seeing some normalization there and the prices are getting passed through. Yes, sir, absolutely. Sure. Uh, sir, uh, just continuing on that, so on the margin side, now we did see, you know, uh, uh, the compression on the gross margin side, uh, which in a way was was expected as well, given the sharp RM price hike, you know, the coal prices, etc. Uh, by when do you think we should be able to pass through a large part of, uh, you know, this inflation, uh, whether it is logistics cost, coal cost, or the RM inflation? Right, sir. So I think, uh, good question, sir. So first of all, if you see the gross margin part, if you compare the last quarter to uh, Q2 to uh, this, Q2 to Q2, uh, the drop has not been significant in spite of a very large uh, uh, increase uh, in raw material costs, right? That's right. Where yeah. the challenge was that a uh, lot, uh, lot of increase uh, in coal logistics uh, part which could not get uh, which could not completely get uh, passed on, right? And uh, some of the international uh, players have not seen this uh, uh, impact as much as we have seen. Uh, some of them don't use coal, right? And uh, so the impact has not been as much for them. But uh, that, having said that, I think uh, we are already seeing a good uh, good path to ex acceptance in the market as. Uh, you know, given the addition uh, energy policy of China, uh, we, we do see uh, next, uh, you know, availability in the next quarter of uh, some of the pigments uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, will sharpen. That's why uh, we will be, uh, we are able to see a good uh, path, path through. Sure. And uh, sir, uh, lastly, uh, if I got you right, you said a quarter for the RM pass through to happen. The sure, uh, what is the challenge has been that the increases has not happened once, right? The increases has is continuous. Yeah. And the last big bullet was the energy policy of China, right? So it's not been a steady state, right? Uh, so we have increased uh, costs. Uh, as you can see, uh, Q2 to Q2, if you see the gross margin raw material pass through happened very well. But the pass through on the other items of coal and logistics could not be passed through enough, right? So we are making every effort now to get make sure that we are able to pass on all that. Yeah. So sure. uh, answering your question and summarizing, we mar uh, margin recovery, volume recovery, you will see in this quarter. So. Uh, great, sir. And just lastly, uh, uh, because of this power shortage, uh, you know, the outrage there in China, the production cuts, etc. Uh, is there any specific impact from an RM availability perspective uh, there for us? Uh, Maybe both on the RM availability as well as the, the sharp RM inflation side. Yes, sir. Uh, the price increases has been quite sharp, okay. Uh, uh, sharp increases. So that been a bit, but uh, we are ensuring that the pass through happens properly. Sure, sir. Uh, that's helpful. I'll get back in touch with you. All the best. Thanks. Sir. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Madhav Mara from FIL. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Good evening. Thank you so much for your time. Um, I just wanted to understand a couple of things. Firstly, uh, in Q2, could you help us with uh, how much was the volume growth and the price growth typically? Hello? So, yes, sir. So, uh, uh, I would say that the demand and uh, uh, volume growth was very soft. We don't break up. Uh, Currently, the uh, breakup, but uh, uh, it was a it was a very soft quarter, sir. As we were not we were hell bent on passing on the increases, and we did lose some uh, volumes. Okay, understood. Okay, and then uh, in the presentation, you have mentioned that um, we can get additional fifteen hundred crore revenue from the new capex in the next three years. Uh, so, just wanted to understand that additional 1500 is on the base of FI21 revenues of around 80, 1900 crores, and then you can get extra 1500 on that. Or, uh, yeah, just wanted to get. It's on the base of FI20. Uh, 
Sir, it's almost, uh, I would say you could use FY2020, I mean, uh, 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 21 as the base. FY21 as the base, okay. And then, uh, as mentioned in the presentation, you're not targeting like a three year period to ramp up 1500 crores of revenue. Is that the right way to read the presentation? Yes, yes sir, absolutely. Okay, okay, that's good to know. And the, the uh, last question from my side would be that um, uh, our margins to come back to levels that they were in in FY21, uh, you know, given that the price action is, has already started, uh, sort of by end of uh, like Q4 or something of FY22, we should be back to our old margins that we saw last year. So there is a uh, there is a big uh, volatility and flux, right? Uh, uh, what is going on? And secondly, um, as you're aware, there is an absolute pass on which happens, right? So the percentage pass on doesn't happen. So you do see some. Uh, Contraction in the percentages, if you are referring to the percentages. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. okay. But on an absolute EBITDA basis, we should be back to our old levels, right? I understand the percent margins will come down as the price goes up. So yes, that's, sir. That's so, uh, uh, absolutely, and uh, like I said, uh, you know, we are uh, getting back uh, the volumes which uh, uh, we had missed out on and uh, at the same time, you know, it's a balancing act, right? You protect your margin, you get back your volumes. Uh, last quarter, uh, we probably got too aggressive in protecting margins, right? Yeah. So there's a balance which uh, kind of uh, uh, we are playing well. well with. Got it. And then also you mentioned that, you know, consolidation is playing out in the global market with Clarion and BSF. Uh, so are we seeing some benefits or tailwinds from that now on the ground? in terms of uh, maybe customers looking for uh, another supplier, et cetera. Are we seeing any tailwinds from, from that playing out? The tailwinds were there, but uh, unfortunately, there were some um, other issues, right? Logistics issues so and the logistics yeah. cost increase, right? So we lost some of our competitiveness there, right? The second is the volatility because they, are fine, you know, they have local uh, bases. Uh, to pay on, right? So these were some of the disadvantages which we faced very sharply. And, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, their supply chain, uh, fortunately, the, you know, uh, unfortunately for us, our supply chain wasn't as long as, uh, you know, uh, their supply chain kind of, so they could withheld uh, some of the uh, pass ons. Understood, understood. Okay. All right, sir. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Viral Shah of Anam Holdings. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, thank you. So my first question was again on the gross margin. So what we've seen is that uh, the input cost started to rise most, most aggressively from September onwards. So do you foresee that gross margins from here on will further deteriorate or do you think that this is the base and from here on we should see an increase in gross margins since we've started to take price hikes? So, um, there were um, gross margins, uh, uh, gross margin as you would have seen uh, Q2 to Q, um, uh, uh, Q2 to Q2, uh, you know, the gross margins have not uh, drastically fallen, right? Because we were able to pass on um, uh, increase, right? 44% to 43.5%, right? Um, so we've been able to hold. Where the challenge is, there's a drop in EBITDA because of other cost increases, right? Coal, um, logistics cost, um, right? And uh, we were also, you know, a lot of our capexes require manning, but they're not still leading revenue as we're going through commercialization. So these three factors have increased our cost base, which we've not been able to kind of, uh, and in the coming quarter, we definitely expect uh, EBITDA margins to, uh, to improve. Sure. So would it be possible to share what is the quantum of price increase that you would have taken in the last one, two or three months? Uh, as a, uh, that's a little bit of a competitive information, sir. So, a little uh, concern on that, but I think uh, uh, we will look at what we can uh, share uh, separately. Sure, sure. 
start. Sir, my second question is on CAPEX. Uh, I think in the presentation we said that our CAPEX for FY22 will be on around 400 crores. So this number is the capitalization number, if I get it right. So what would be the cash outflow that will happen in FY22? FI 23, 24, how do you look at CAPEX, sir? Uh, would it be bare minimum to 100 crores and below, or that would uh, FI 23, 24 also we should expect 150, 200 crores of CAPEX? Uh, sir, I think um, as we said, uh, most of our new products will get introduced by this year, right? Mm -hmm. So, whatever CAPEX uh, we would do is on backward integration now, uh, uh, going forward. Right uh, after this 750 completion, so um, it should be uh, you know we still need to go to the board yet, of course, but uh, it will be at a minimum level. Sure, sure. So my third question would be on uh, the land sale. Are we looking at uh, land sale of the Pune uh, uh, at Pune, and are there any timelines or something that we've thought about the same? So the. Uh, uh, the board is actively looking at uh, how what we should do uh, with the land, etc. Uh, there are some legal compliance issues, etc., which the board is looking at right now. Uh, right now, there is no view uh, in the coming uh, years as to uh, what, what could be the next steps. As soon as we have some clarity, we would definitely share that. Sure. And my last one, sir, if you could provide some clarity on the promoter selling that has been taking place for the last few uh, couple of quarters. Sir. The problem is that it, every quarter we are seeing incremental sales happening from the promoter group or the entity which has now been declassified as promoter. So it is not helping build confidence. So if you could just uh, share your thoughts on the same, that would be helpful. So, so I understand that. Uh, uh, you know, the company was going through a transition to a more professionally managed company and some of the promoters uh, had stepped down from active management roles and uh, they wanted to set up their uh, uh, you know uh, small uh, they wanted to set up their own non competing businesses for which they required uh, some funds and that's where very uh, you know partial percentages were sold off um, the both the promoters are fully committed to the growth of production and have full confidence in building the business Uh, Mr. Shah, do you have any further questions? No, thank you. I'm done. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Mr. Sanjesh Jain uh, from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, thanks for taking my question. A uh, few of them. Uh, first on the inventory and the export sales. Export sales has been quite weak. On the other end, we have a... Uh, Inventory increased by close to 70 crores. Uh, versus can, you, can you repeat? Sir, can you, can you repeat? Uh, we could not hear you. No, no. Can you hear me now, sir? Yeah, much better. Yeah. So I was, I was looking at the export sales, which have been sluggish versus domestic. And there is an increase in the inventory by 70 crore. Uh, and we have uh, been talking about the logistical issue. Is, is that we are keeping the final inventory, which wasn't able to ship and revenue couldn't be recognized. Is that the reason why there is a sharp jump in the inventory or it is because of the increase in the raw material prices, which is leading to the increase in the inventory? So, uh, I think, sir, about, uh, you know, one is obviously having logistic uh, issues uh, has caused uh, some inventory increase. But we were also, uh, you know, uh, we had our finished goods ready, but we could not get some of our price increases, right? And that's where uh, we were not shipping uh, our goods even to uh, the Indian, some of our Indian uh, customers. 
So that's where, uh, in order to uh, ensure margin protection, we had to uh, keep, keep that inventory. And the liquidation has started as we speak in the Q3. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. Okay. The benefit of this should be available in the next quarter as we see. Yes. Uh, the second question is on the China. Now that China, there is a there is a curtailment in the capacity, and China being one of the largest manufacturer of azo pigment, and uh, we all have also mentioned that the increase of competitive pressure. Do you think that uh, uh, with with lower capacity available at the China because of the power shortage? Uh, we should be able to ramp up this facility faster than what we have thought earlier or the current guidance of three years could be achieved sooner than what we expect. Uh, can we envisage uh, that kind of a situation? Uh, so, first of all, I think uh, we're getting to several uh, uh, pigments which are non-ASO, right? Uh, right. Uh, I think uh, I would still, uh, you know, these are new products that, uh, you know, into... Uh, in, in, into coatings and other applications, which does take some time for approval, and the wrap up uh, is a little slow. We'll obviously be hoping that uh, we do this uh, in slightly less than three years, but I think three years is a, uh, a good amount to drop this. Uh, having said this, sir, uh, uh, there may be short term gains as, as we have also expanded our ASO capacities. There could be some short term gains. Uh, uh, you know, if uh, China does have issues with supplies, uh, etc., we've seen a lot of chemicals and intermediates where uh, are affected. Uh, so far, there is no intelligence on the pigment capacities being curtailed, right? Uh, and if uh, on the ASO side, right? Some of, we've come across some other uh, areas which are being curtailed, right? Okay. Just one one uh, clarification here on the competition side. Uh, we have seen in general the chemical prices have gone up uh, significantly. Some of commodity chemicals have actually uh, gone up by more than 2x. Now, what is causing the competition uh, in the pigment industry while there is a constraint in terms of the uh, uh, the capacity production in the most competitive market, there is a RM pressure. Uh, what is causing this increase in the competitive intensity? Were there people sitting with a big inventory and they wanted to liquidate, or uh, uh, what? Can you just help us understand this competitive dynamics a little bit more uh, well? I think, as I said, some of uh, there were three, four issues which were kind of dynamic, right? So. The logistic cost increase kind of gave, uh, led to, uh, you know, the Europeans also becoming competitive and more, you know, better availability and service uh, uh, locally because they have local production units, right? Um, that was one. The second is, uh, you know, uh, there is a, uh, uh, you know, in terms of consolidation, uh, some short-term gains uh, to be kind of uh, uh, gotten. And uh, as I mentioned, their supply chain was more uh, secured, more longer term secured uh, than some of us. And that's where uh, uh, we saw these competitive uh, pressure. Um, fortunately, that is over now, and we are able to see that we are able to kind of pass on uh, uh, some increases and also get the volumes back. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, one question on the product pipeline we just spoke about in our opening remark. Uh, LO pigment looks like we are uh, fully commercializing in uh, in Q3, and we are talking of another two HPP uh, getting commercialized in Q3 and Q4. Can you just tell us what is the total addressable market all these three uh, new products put together uh, give us with the complete commercialization? Just one second. One second. So if you uh, if you look at the entire capexes which we uh, expect to commercialize in the next half, the potential of that is about 1,500 crores uh, right. in the next few years. No, no, no. I, I was just looking at the new product launches. Uh, which we are doing, which were not existence in our portfolio earlier. Now, out of this $8 billion of the uh, pigment market, 
uh, which we talk, we won't be servicing all of them, right? So there is an increase in the total addressable market for us. Or to put it simple, these three products put together today, uh, how much will be the industry size for the three uh, products, LO and the two new HPP product which we are launching? Just, just one second, huh? Uh, so this is the operator just checking. You've muted your line, right? Yeah, just yes, just yes, a second. Thank you, thank you. Let me, uh, you know, we don't have this answer readily available. We'll uh, we'll come back to you. Sure, sir. Sure, sure. Uh, uh, that's it from my side. Uh, thanks for all the uh, answering all the questions and best of luck for coming quarters. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Amar Moria from Alf Accurate Advisors. Please go ahead. So thanks a lot for the opportunity. Two questions from my side. Number one is uh, now, as you indicated, sir, that yellow pigment uh, commercial quantities got approved. So from here on, can we see a faster pickup? Uh, I believe we had invested around 350 crore in the yellow pigment, right? Hello. Uh, obviously, we you know we are not. Uh, all the capexes we are not giving uh, breakups as confidential information, but I think uh, we do expect a quicker payback and as and uh, since the qualities have got start approving in the next three years, we should be able to uh, uh, see the complete capacity utilization of this plant. Okay. okay. And secondly, sir, now this 1500 crores of full potential of the 750 crores revenue. So largely kind of a 2x kind of a sweat of that ratio we are expecting now. Uh, so just wanted to understand, like, you know, last quarter there was some confusion that we were indicating that 135 crore is a kind of an infrastructure capex for which the potential revenue may be get delayed. So I am just, uh, you know, wanted to confirm that this 1500 crores include that or exclude that? Sir, uh, the 750 includes uh, that investment and the, uh, the entire potential. We've given a full potential of the entire 750 crores to make it very simple so that there are no breakups. Okay. And secondly, sir, the 1500 crores, let's say when we are targeting in three years, so can we say, like, you know, it will be equally divided in three years or kind of like, you know, how the uh, scale up will happen for the 1500 crores? Mm -hmm. Hello. So uh, the first year, first year would be slightly slower, and then it should wrap up, sir. So, so like first year, let's say twenty uh, percent at least, or thirty percent. No. So I would say I would say twenty percent. Okay. Okay, and then you are saying equally divided between the two years. Yes, and third would be slightly higher. Second would be slightly. I mean, so, the ramp up would happen, sir. Sure. Sir. Sure. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, before we take the next question, we'd like to remind participants that you may enter star one to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Aditya Mehta from GK Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So in last quarter, Concord, we mentioned that 120 crore of CAPEX will get completed by the September end, and the balance was to be completed by Q3. So has it been delayed or any reason behind for the delay? So uh, what has happened is because of the uh, wave two, some of our equipments had got delayed and the installation now is completed, right? Uh, and now the commercialization is in progress and uh, uh, we do expect uh, by the year end, uh, you know, uh, gradually the entire uh, CapEx would get completed by the year end. 
Okay, by Q4, all the capex will be commercialized. Sorry? By Q4, all the capex will be commercialized, which we have done this year. Absolutely. Okay, and so currently, utilization levels are around 60%. So what is the highest utilization, utilization level which we can see over a period of time? Eighty to eighty-five percent, sir. Eighty to eighty-five percent. And so then my last question on industry structure. Just want your understanding that we see the total decibel market size available to us is eight point six billion dollars. And despite the fact that we've been top two, top three, or four player in the industry, we only hold around three percent market share. So, is the industry comprised of so many diverse players that it's difficult to increase our market share, or what is the realistic market share one can achieve uh, over a period of time? So, I think uh, if you see the first, uh, you know, in the old structure, the first three players, uh, you know, the First three players almost had a, a two and a half to three billion uh, uh, market, right? So, mm. and after that, there was a big gap, and uh, then there were smaller players. Uh, these three players obviously uh, have been global, a uh, very broad portfolio. Uh, some players like us have just expanded our portfolio to that level. So, it will take some time for us to ramp up. Uh, uh, to ramp up our uh, sale, uh, they have a first mover advantage. They have, uh, uh, you know, their network which is well set and products which have been there for several years. But I think uh, with our completion of product portfolio, we feel uh, quite uh, bullish on how uh, on our growth perspectives in the future. Okay, okay, good sir. Thank you. That is from my side. Thank you very much. Our next question is from the line of Dhruv of HDFC AMC. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you so much. So in your presentation, in the current presentation, uh, the slide uh, on the CapEx, uh, which is slide number nine, uh, you have said the CapEx plan of 750 crores and approximate revenue of about 1,500 crores. Uh, 15,000 crores, sorry, 1,500 crores. And so a similar slide you had in March presentation where you had given a capex of about 600 crores and a revenue potential of about 1,000 to 1,200 crores. So I understand the capex increase, if I'm not wrong, from 600 to 750 is the utility capex which you had recently announced. But that time the understanding was that this is not a revenue capex, this is only a utility capex. So, so what is driving this change in your uh, revenue guidance on this capex from 1,200 to uh, 1,500 crores? Uh, so, the, uh, some of the, the capexes, we delayed some of the uh, utility and the affluent treatment and we had some uh, some opportunities uh, on the uh, revenue side, which uh, we've completed. Uh, uh, we have, uh, we, you know, we've been able to kind of be bottleneck some of our in, uh, purity and intermediate, and that's why we're giving you a complete mix now, so that there is no ambiguity uh, on, uh, on on the split. And this is what uh, this is what the master plan looks like. Okay, so the utility capex that you had, uh, I believe, uh, in the quarter, you, a quarter before that you had announced, is uh, delayed a bit. Instead of that, you have done re uh, some revenue generating capexes. Yes. Okay. So we have reduced. Uh, you know, the earlier we thought we would need that uh, 135, 40 crores, 50 crores. Uh, that has been considerably reduced, and that has been used towards uh, some revenue generating. Okay. Okay. And the uh, the uh, revenue generating capex is uh, broadly sim uh, in line with the existing products that we have. It's more of a brownfield of uh, some existing capacities. Yes. It is not the HPP categories. Uh, it. Uh, it is. Uh, it's a combination of some HPP and uh, our traditional business. Okay. Got it. So that's helpful. And so the second question was, um, uh, in one of your earlier comments, you did mention uh, uh, about some of your competitors, uh, you know, not facing similar logistics or not facing the cost impact, when, and you were referring to these competitors. So when you say these category of competitors, which custom, uh, which competitors are you referring to? Are, the, are these the European competitors or somebody, uh, are the players from China? No, I meant uh, European, obviously, you, you know, the main market is uh, Europe, right? Europe, US. And uh, we uh, so you know so basically when you compete with them, uh, 
they have local plants there, uh, so the shipping costs, logistics issues, they do not face, right, what we face. Okay, got it. And so, uh, in terms of outward freight, for our average categories of, of our product uh, that we export largely, uh, when we're focusing on exports, what would be the outward freight be as percentage of uh, at current spot pricing, uh, spot value of freight? Have, as a percentage of your, you know, sale value. I'm just trying to understand how has it changed. How does I mean, was it say five percent earlier? Now it has become ten percent. So that five percent differential is something big, which is impacting. So uh, I think there are two factors to it here. One is obviously the cost, and second is the uh, availability, right? That you are, uh, you know, and the lead times to reach that uh, plant. So with all these uncertainties, sometimes the local competition gets uh, more benefit. That's what I meant. Got it. Got it. Sure. But so just to understand the cost angle, if you, if it is possible to share some, uh, you know, some uh, broader sense on that, uh, how how big is this cost now versus say what what was uh, pre-COVID or pre uh, when the trade rates were normal? The cost increase is about fifty times. Rate. Three times, and as percentage of sales, how much that would be? Uh, I mean, uh, the outward trade would be. Right now, we don't have that number, sir. Sure, sir. And um, so the last thing was on the uh, just to understand a bit on the nature of the so uh, the, la, la, the incremental growth large part is coming from your HPT products, uh, the one of the yellows one that you mentioned. So is the nature of business there a bit different than the uh, than your existing set of products? I, what I'm trying to understand is it more uh, linked, uh, uh, very well aligned with the customer that. Uh, uh, the cost pass through happens at a very, at a very faster pace. Uh, it is more smoother. Is that a kind of a structure, or it's almost similar to what you currently have? So the cost increase is similar. In fact, some of the other high performance pigments have a very steep cost increase. Uh, 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 cost increase, as uh, you know, some of them are uh, yellow uh, phosphorus based uh, chemicals are used, which have seen a very sharp increase because of the energy policy of. China. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so I understand that. Sure, sir. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Ritesh Polaria of Garrett Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I might have missed out this. Uh, what is the volume growth uh, in this 12% uh, revenue growth? So currently, we don't kind of uh, break up the volume and uh, this group. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that was my question. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Abhijit Sinha of Pi Square Investments. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Uh, could you just highlight a bit on the increase in debt that we have in the working capital debt this quarter? Could you repeat your question? It was uh, your voice broke Am up. Am I audible, sir? Yeah. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Yes, sir. So I just want to clarify on the debt. Sir. The working capital debt that we have has increased this this quarter. So what would be the reason for that? So the increase in debt was uh, mainly uh, the capex outlet uh, and some inventory increase. Not only one of them. Hi, you can hear. So uh, the increase in debt is uh, predominantly on account of the capex. So we we had taken the capex soon as as a part of our capex implementation program, and uh, uh, as as Mr. Ratti spoke about on the inventory part, which is on the FG side, uh, which has led to uh, the working capital loan increase. Also. All right. So, sir, uh, as uh, as your colleague mentioned, that about 250 crores we're gonna spend in the next half of the year, right, to meet our 400 crore plan. So again, that will be taken in as debt. Because our debt to equity becomes massive. It's much more than one right now. So, sir, what we said, 250 is uh, for the total year. Okay. So, uh, uh, so, so the debt level will be uh, will be at around 750 crore. Uh, I don't expect it to go further up. Okay. And sir, since it's working capital loan, I assume that the debt interest rate won't be that much, right? 
correct sir so currently we are taking the advantage of low interest rate and we are exploring all the available options to lower the cost so it should be in the same range what kind of debt to equity ratio are you comfortable with with this capex plan that we have so uh, 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 we expect this debt equity ratio to remain at the current rate okay so we will be monitoring that and we will be comfortable with this i had another question i uh, another of my colleagues they just mentioned about the yellow dye that you have uh, i was just wondering about the turnover or you know what's the plan for the that since it's already begun commercialization so what is the revenue plan and all that so do we have anything right now or should that be taken later on uh, so this is a individual product right and we would not like its competitive information which is not going to be given in the public domain uh, i think the point was that this is part of the what a part of the 750 this was the earliest which was launched and uh, the point of making the point is we are already seeing a sale of this product uh, coming through commercially right uh, to uh, to several customers uh, so that's a very positive indication of uh, the product getting accepted in the market that's the only one point of the so it's one of the revenues from the 1500 crore that has have helped in the skip right yes, sir. and sir my last question was regarding the market share uh, we just spoke about it briefly right now but you mentioned that since our mahat plant was closed and everything uh, others had a better chain at that time a supply chain so a couple of orders they were able to service we held back a couple of inventories because of the margins that we weren't getting so has that affected our market share in the last 6 months we definitely lost some volumes as i mentioned uh, uh, you know we you know we are a choice to Uh, protect margins. Uh, we didn't want to further, uh, you know, uh, erode that, and uh, uh, that's the uh, area where we could have we lost some volume. And uh, uh, I'm glad to tell you that we're already recovering those volumes now and uh, uh, ensuring that margins are protected. Perfect. Sir. So since you guys are like uh, have a plan in terms of the margins that we have. So in FY22, do we expect to be about in the range of 12 to 13 percent, or should it be about 10 to 11 percent? A bit the margin. So we should, uh, I mentioned, we should recover from here, sir. Uh, so the margins, uh, margins from here should definitely recover. All right, sir. So uh, obviously it won't be as good as last year's, but somewhere a bit, a bit close to that, right? It's better than better than what it is today, sir. Definitely. Understood. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Viral Shah of Fanam Holdings. Please go ahead. Yes, yeah, sir. Can you throw some light on the demand side uh, in terms of segment wise? How are you seeing demand from plastic paints, coatings, and others? So, sir, uh, if you look at uh, if you look at coatings. Uh, the demand in uh, q uh, q2 was uh, good uh, however we are seeing a softening in demand now right as the increasing prices uh, 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 the increasing prices and uh, uh, discovered some raw materials at uh, lower as they were expecting price increases right uh, in terms of uh, plastics uh, uh, coming out of covid q2 uh, we did see some uh, uh some issues because polymer prices have had increased and they were uncertain about whether they would be able to pass through right uh, uh pass through that however now plastic demand we see recovering now right uh inks uh, was sluggish uh, both newspaper uh, news newsprint and uh, the fmgc uh, the food packaging industry Uh, we do see the packaging industry kind of uh, picking up uh, to a certain extent. Okay. And then on the exports, sir, I think this quarter we were at around 210 crores of export. So how do you see this panning out over the next couple of quarters? When do we achieve 250 crores and then 300 crores on a quarterly rendered basis? So uh, as I mentioned, this. Uh, 
uh, this quarter was the weakest and we do expect a uh, good recovery to happen now on. Sure, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Amar Moria from Alpha Curit. Please go ahead. Yeah. So thanks a lot for the opportunity again. Uh, so my question was, like, you know, in first half, despite a, a lower volume uh, and, and a, a better pricing, we had been able to get like 24% kind of a first half versus first half growth. Now, given that, uh, you know, we are looking to pass on the prices further, and obviously the volumes are going to be better than the uh, what it was there in the first half. So can we see that the second half revenue growth would be much, much uh, higher than the first half kind of a growth? So as I mentioned, uh, 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 you know, and I could give uh, directional uh, uh, answer to that, sir. Uh, you know, we did see a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, we did not see good growth. Uh, and uh, uh, as we see Q3 onwards, uh, uh, we are uh, uh, we are focused on uh, we are really focused on volume growth. Uh, uh, we we've ensured some of our margins are protected, which was a good strategy that time. And uh, you know, difficult decision, but we took those decisions. But uh, you know, it was more of a mid-term, long-term uh, kind of uh, play, and we do see. Uh, good volume growth coming uh, now onwards, unless and until some unprecedented event happens, etc. Uh, but otherwise, uh, we should see a good good growth coming in. Okay. okay. So, meaning you're saying volume-led growth and followed by that, you know, uh, the margin protected or margin improving. So, obviously, uh, we have to take a price increase also, right? So, that part will also get included into your revenue. So, that was my question that don't buy a good volume growth and a better pricing, uh, our growth in the second half should be much, much uh, better than the first half kind of a growth number, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Rohit Nagraj of MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the follow up. Uh, so the uh, capacity utilization that we have mentioned in Q2 is 60%. Uh, is this considering the uh, capex of 293 crores, uh, which is already put to use? Uh, uh, yes, yes, sir. Uh, including that, and of course, part of some of that 293 was uh, uh, small part was uh, utilities and infrastructure, right? But yes. Right, and I just uh, do the math in terms of 60% capacity is giving us uh, say close to 500 crores quarterly run rate, uh, probably at 100% uh, or maybe 90%. Uh, we need to have something like 750 crores of quarterly run rate. Uh, is that the right way of understanding it? On an Excel spreadsheet, yes, sir. But in the real, uh, uh, real market and real. Uh, then uh, it will be different. Uh, uh, different. Okay, fair enough, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Paras Nagra from Enam. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, yes, sir. So my question is, uh, uh, is it fair to assume that in the quarter gone by the, uh, the quarter for which we are reporting the results, there was little or no price increase which was taken in the export market and most of the price increases are starting to come in in the current quarter. Is that a fair assumption or an inference that we can make from the results? No, uh, no, sir. I don't think uh, that would be a fair. There was some pass-throughs uh, which were happening. Okay, fair. Thank you. Our last question is from the line of Aditya Mehta from GK Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, so thanks for the follow-up. So as you mentioned that the European players are not facing cost increase on the logistic front. So since this phenomena doesn't seem to be abating in the near term, so how are you how, how are we planning to tackle this situation? No, uh, I think what I meant is uh, the there was there are three three fronts of cost increase. Major one is raw materials, 
The second is indirect, like coal or gas, right? We are affected by coal, they are affected by gas. Mm. And the third is logistic cost, right? Uh, when I meant by logistic competitiveness, it has two components, as I explained. One is the cost part, but the second part is the certainty of delivery, right? Uh, earlier, our, uh, you know, our customers could be assured of lead times, of supplies, etc. Uh, that's a little bit of a concern, and somewhere that uh, advantage for a local player. That, that's what I meant. Okay, so now whether the availability has uh, increased, improved, or uh, we are still at the same level? So the availability, uh, uh, availability is still a, availability is still a challenge. Uh, however, uh, you know we are ensuring that uh, our warehouses there uh, carry a little more stock, etc., which we can serve customers. Okay, so that's there's no issue on our capacity front or our capability front. The issue is on the logistic part, the delivery and commitment part. Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir, and all the best to you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. As there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to uh, Mr. Neil Kant Natu, CFO, for closing comments. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, all the participants, for your time and interest in Sudars and Chemicals. We remain confident in the long term prospect of our business and we look forward to engaging with you again. Thank you. Stay safe. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Sudarshan Chemical Industries, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.